Okay. Been doing some thinking. Um, why I'm getting a signal that's a little bit low. Okay, you know. Uh, no one's perfect. But, um, why when putting a sine wave signal onto here, generated, and, um, for this show, generate a sine wave tone. Yeah, levels do go up eventually, but even though I've got to trim this up by about my plus 8 dB, it will go up to about 10. But that's not really making too much of a difference. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's only taken me a while to realise this. Uh, you know, you, of course, if anyone will think, you know, um, but you got to remember the uh, the output levels are set to uh, minus 16 dB, which is uh, standard. Uh, there's a switching uh, to put these to about plus four, um, but that's neither here or there because it's problem will still be the same because um, the signal might be going out more stronger on the output here, but because I'm wiring onto the um, output on the system output because the system signal input going there. And then the system signal output is coming out and then coming down onto here, onto auxiliary number two. It's louder on there. That's because it's going out from the AVR directly. Going onto the DB25, uh, connecting. And even though I got that sent down a little bit, but it still outputs a little bit too high. But um, I'm not sure if I'm going to solve the problem. It's I can I can make it work, but it's not as if I don't you know I can think I can solve it hundred um, percent. I'm going to try and fit a uh, ba 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 ba. I'll fit this in. Oh, I've had this got this I don't know how many years ago, um, but I never used it. So I might make up some leads tonight. <coughs> um, make up uh, some uh, make up some leads if I've got any uh, oh, I need a minimum if I've got any spare and if I've got any spare uh, I need uh, four uh, mile uh, pin XLRs and then four female and probably got to look around and see if I've got any uh, free core cable. Um, anything free core, anything I can sort of find and then solder it up. And then connect one of the line inputs. It's got line input, input one, input two, the stereo, and then you got outputs, stereo. Mono, stereo, mono, stereo, mono, etc., etc., etc. Um, so I would have <coughs> the line, the signal that connects onto there. I'll put it on one of these. Now I don't know how much noise it would generate. I haven't tested it yet. <coughs> If it's going to have a, any noise or if it's going to raise the level up until the level there is equal as well as I've got to turn that back down to, you know, because this effectively is like running out down to there on that line, this, on that auxiliary 2 at minus 16 dB. Theoretically, so I'm not sure if this is clear. <clears throat> um. oh. So, let's 
that's the STDS, the main, that's the main primary STDS. And that's coming down on the output, on the system output. But essentially the output's at minus 16. So by the time the signal gets down to here, of course it's gonna look imbalanced in the level because it's at minus 16. So, so here, I'd wire this box, the uh, Behringer box, I would wire that in. So the signal is sort of coming out, going over, up, round, up, round, meow, and then goes on the input. Okay. Input. And then the output. The output. And then it comes down, round, down, in, through. And then comes back down and then goes back into the... And then I turn up the level until I got equal level with a sine wave test time. <coughs> and then... I know it's level match, but I don't know how much. I don't know how much signal ratio there's going to be, so I haven't tested it. I will I'll find out in a hurry. I'll put it up, put it together, and then I'll know. If it's got a ground hum. Mm, well, hopefully it shouldn't, if all the leads are all soldered and they're all pinned. Um, if I try and remember an XLR, um, one, I think is GND, number two is hot or positive, and number three is uh, CO, cold, negative. Another symbol for ground. Um, yeah. So, as long as I wire up all the pins, all that, uh, so it's all parallel, all parallel, all continuity. Um, I shouldn't have any ground hum. Um, but there you do get gremlins. Um, so I just have to, it's a pretty complicated sort of thing to do but it's also going to have another advantage <coughs> um, um, that's where it gets a little bit complicated I think now so uh, main AVR there uh, AVR uh, can't botch that even happens I'm doing a video. Okay. AVR, right? So, that's the demon, you know, the demon. The 8500. 8500. The Denon. Okay, the Atmos. The Apt. The app mouse, the app mouse, and uh, put some whiskers on it. <laughs> so that's not not a very good mouse, but. You got you got the app mouse, the Dolby app mouse, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, I'd have to take the um, the regular um, surround channels, the regular the outputs, the the original sort of thing. Those regular surrounds would come out, go down, come down, and they go into one of the other inputs. Okay. And then, of course, then the output then would have to 
go back through to up here on the output onto the input so, um, oh, that's not a very good surround yes you are <laughs> Pen's not very good. S U R S U R S U R. Fucking my my description here is is in 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 um <laughs> decipherable. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> you can lock it out, but you can't make it work. <laughs> Um, so it would come back and would go into the SDDS, right? Here's, here's the good thing about this, right? Because it's, um, focus. It's difficult because the lighting's making it weird. Got stereo mono. That's the good thing. Now, certain movies uh, occasionally um, get remixed into, um, I don't know, with stereo surround or such. Um, so, you know, popular ones like, um, say, the Star Treks. Um, all Star Trek movies, if, 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 if the actual 70 motion picture was used, the 70 mil one uh, um, used, um, you know, theatrically for, you know, it was only used as a premiere release and all the other prints were 35 mil and every other Star Trek movie, Air 2, 3 and 4 and 5 were 70 mil mag, uncompressed audio. There, they would be format 42. Only, the only Star Trek movie in the entire series uh, the originals the originals that had split stereo around was star trek 6 the undiscovered country all the others were format 43 format 42 so i find it a little bit strange when listening to star trek 2 um yeah it just bugs me that oh i just want to just turn that surround there into mono why turn it into mono? Oh, ooh. but why did the mixers? Oh dear, why, why, why do you get all oh, these people and they tamper with the mix? You know, it wouldn't be too bad if there were two versions on the language track. Remix, split surround, stereo surround, whatever. And then original, theatrical 70 mil six track. You know, left, center, right, and... Occasionally, I like to use the left, center, right, center to um, enhance um, any phantom signals or any dialogue panning or panning sounds. I like to sometimes engage and have the five screen on. But, you know, you can't just tell an AVR like, you know. I mean, the CP200 would do that if I wired it in a specific order i got it wired differently on the cp200 but if i were to do another type of wiring because there's um how many 70 mil 70 mil modes uh it's got about one two i think it's two 70 mil inputs uh i think three non-sync inputs two optical i think it's two optical inputs or something was it four? I don't know. I can't remember. But you've got all the buttons up here. It's sort of switched off at the moment. So you've got all the buttons up here. And you select the format on there. And then select one of the presets over down here. And then you get the blinking light flashing. And you're maybe on a current sound format. A current one that's presently got the source playing. And you're standing by, the light's blinking, ready to stand by to alert and tell you. 
and then when we're ready on Q select and switches um, that essentially would do kind of like you know kind of like a mono stereo switch in a sense um, uh, format 40 41 and 42 uh, the surrounds would be mono um, format 40 free um, surrounds typically uh, will be will, will be split stereo splits around splits around stereo surrounds blah 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 um, actually it's not just more than, a bit more than format 43 44 45 and 46 but that's only different noise reduction things uh, so that's neither here or there um, yeah that, that kind of in a sense would do it but I would do it on this and um, I know what movies would be kind of split stereo surround and you know typically like aliens that would be format 42 that wouldn't that mostly when you listen to it on DVD uh, or I think even the AC3 is a little bit they tinkered with it and turned those uh, surrounds into kind of stereo it's not as if it, it's a bad it's not as if it's bad. I've heard far worse. I've heard far worse transfers. Uh, that belonging cat litter. Um, but there's a fiat. They say there's a theatrical version on the Blu-ray, and you switch it over, and it's you know, it needs a little bit more listening to see whether it is, or whether they're bullshitting. Um, so yeah. But essentially, I would have a switch. If I get onto it now and start seeing if I've got any... I can get this up and then get at the back of the rack, do the wiring. Not that I want to be in the back of the rack. I was back of this last night for a few hours. Um, but it's uh, it's always... This, this is an ongoing sort of thing. But uh, that would definitely be... a a game change and uh, I don't think you get anything like that on a Denon like a, a switch to switch these surrounds to mono or switch them to stereo whatever you don't gonna get that sort of feature and you certainly wouldn't even get it on a Trinov I can guarantee you that <laughs> um, so yeah I was also thinking of changing out the uh, CP45 down here and putting a and the Adobe SA10, which I've got another one, and putting that in the rack. Um, and that's a little bit complicated to do. So if I want to do center backs around, blah, blah, I can still do that. I can still do it with this. And But the only thing is, is um, running regular surround. And that's using uh, the right half up to there round to there so all these up to there they're all playing the same signal with regular surround uh, if it's got stereo surround or if it's mono matrix they'd all be along with down this side so this would be the left half and it goes round and then you've got the right half and then when it EXs or centre backs around CBS you just extract the scent of phantom from all these and there and then you stick it right at the back totally with only the sides here and not there they only play a different sound um i could switch i could put that sa10 in because the CP45 won't kind of do that because it hasn't got it has, it has to have a special simple logic circuit switching on it. Um, that's why that's why I'm doing this at, at the moment. So I'm just basically sending the same signal out from the surround down to here, so I can duplicate the the exact same original surround signature because most people think, you know. Most people are not at home theatres and that totally and utterly forgot. You think you're playing Star Wars on your laser disc and your home theatre 
in the correct sound format, you're not. You're, you're, and chances are, you probably never saw the movie theatrically. So, and the other chances are, is you probably, when was the last time you heard left half, right half surround configuration at a cinema? Uh, because that sort of thing has slightly changed. I'm not sure if present cinema processors can still run regular or you know from if it if it's 51 they should be running the backs of the, the speakers on the back wall that's how it was from the beginning um and then running through to ex or uh, dts ex and uh, dts es that was discrete um and then seven one, and uh, which is kind of like a Sony SDDS kind of when you think about it. It's eight channels, and it's well, they just turn it around, don't they? You know, rather than using left center, right center, they could have still used the X. I would have rather uh, say, yeah, let's just have left center, right center back. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so you know, it's a pretty complicated thing to do this is very complicated because it's got to be done right and then level checking and uh, um, yeah it's got to run so that yeah but yeah, it's bloody complicated and I've been doing test tones and I've been checking out um, it's my uh one kilohertz sine wave that's generating out from CP750, and then is is it you know is it minus twenty dB on there on the on the CP20? Is it seven fifty? Is it minus twenty? Because I know the levels are different between the REM and true RTA. The site the the levels are several dB differences between the two and that's not a problem because you get a little audio mixer that you can bring up and then you can adjust the, the true rta slightly to match the same level to this um it's a level trim kind of like uh, here on the sony a trim level and every oer has got an analog digital level trim which I guess most people don't even hardly use. Um, <laughs> it's it's there for a purpose. And uh, if I had to explain um, that purpose, which is pretty basic, simple, I uh, had to explain. It's a little bit, a little bit complicated, but it's kind of fun. Uh, if you're into this sort of thing, it's kind of, kind of fun. Um, kind of, Used the pro the approach uh, many years ago and uh, on a movie uh, to test level and check and make sure everything's all spot on and you know damn was it loud <laughs> yeah uh, that's that so I'm just gonna get cracking and on that see if I can get that installed tonight or the very least tomorrow. <laughs> Mm. Mm.